Tuesday, October 8th. Today's a big day. Why, you might be wondering? Well, I get to play Texas Hold'em against two guys you might have heard of, Andrew Nimi and Brad Owen. They're hosting a 5-5 No Limit meetup game in Los Angeles, and yours truly will be in attendance. So it starts in about an hour or hour and a half. Let's head over there and see what happens. Wish me luck. All right, how's it going guys? Welcome back to the vlog. This episode is gonna cover a session I played a couple days ago now, which as you saw in the intro was a 5-5 no limit session at Hollywood Park Casino. Special event because Brad Owen and Andrew Nimi invited a bunch of fun folks to come drink, hang out, gamble, and as a result, the game played a little bit bigger. But the primary goal is to just have fun and meet a bunch of fellow vlog watchers, which I sure did. Thanks to all you guys who said what's up. It's awesome to meet you in person instead of just through a camera all the time. It was definitely a lot of fun and I did get involved in quite a few interesting spots. Obviously I captured them all for you guys. So without any further ado, let's jump into some of these hands which include bomb pots, straddles, blind all-ins, etc, etc. That's it. Let's do it. Let's go. So, the very first hand of this session that was of any importance, I actually got dealt in right when I sat down. Didn't have the phone ready to go, so you guys are gonna have to take my word for it, but I didn't wanna leave it out because it was pretty instrumental to the rest of the session. Anyway, as mentioned, first hand dealt in, under the gun, I look down at pocket sevens, raise it up to $20 playing 5-5 no limit, and get called by plus one, plus two, and also the big blind. So four ways here to a flop, which right off the bat, things are starting off on the right foot. Comes down nine, seven, six, rainbow. So we flop middle set right away. Action checks to me, I decide to put out a continuation bet of $55. And a little surprisingly, all three players make the call. So we got a pot brewing here. Off to a turn, which is the Jack of Hearts, bringing in a backdoor heart draw. Shouldn't be too relevant. Normally, backdoor flush draws aren't nearly as common as front door ones. I decide to get a little deceptive and check it. I think this card will improve my opponents a lot and being that the pot looks ripe for stealing, I think someone's gonna put in a bet and allow me to check raise all in, only having around $400 behind at this point. So don't mind a bet, but I decide to check it. Plus one checks and plus two gives us some good news. Announces all in for $420. The big blind gets out of the way. I make the call and the player on my left folds. So heads up to a river. Our opponent shows king 10 of hearts. So we're in pretty good shape and it seems like checking the turn actually resulted in the most money getting in the middle. Anyway, the river comes off a heart, but it's the nine of hearts. Pairing the board, giving us a full house and we managed to get a pretty big pot right off the bat here. Off to a good start at Hollywood Park.
One of the cool things about doubling up quick in a 100 big blind cap game is that you're able to play bigger pots for the rest of your session, which theoretically, if you're a winning player, should allow for a bigger win rate over time. Anyway, that's what's gonna happen in this next hand. When I look down at pocket queens from late position, I open it up to $20, and the player on my left, three bets to $70 from the cutoff. He was a pretty active player, a pretty good player, I think, so I don't really narrow this range to only premium hands like I might against some other opponents. It folds over to the big blind who makes the call for $70 and action gets back to me. The player on my direct left has around 350 behind and the big blind has around 600. So I think this is a pretty good spot to put in the four bet and squeeze out the dead money from the blinds and possibly get a heads up all in versus the player on my left. There's this weird paradox where sometimes jamming all in looks weaker than putting in a smaller raise. And I think this is one of those spots where if I just send it in, it's gonna look like I have ace king ace queen or some kind of hand that I don't really want to navigate post flop versus if I make it like, I don't know, 200 or something, it's going to look really strong. Like I'm begging for action. So after thinking for a little bit, I send it all in just to target the remaining three or 400 from the cutoff while at the same time, squeezing out the big blinds equity. However, that's not what ends up happening. The cutoff pretty quickly makes the fold and the big blind decides on a call. He has around 600 behind, so somehow this pot ballooned all the way up to 1.3 or so, 1.4K, something ridiculous like that. And it seems like we're gonna see all five cards against what I assume to be a hand like nines, tens, or jacks. I ask him if he has pocket tens and he says one up. So it seems like we're up against pocket jacks. Board runs out in our favor though. Queen three, deuce, four, three. So we find another full house and manage to scoop a ginormous pot. Turns out the cutoff had ace five of hearts, which would have been interesting if somehow we all made it to the flop. But no complaints regardless, happy to take down another huge pot and continue the run good here at Hollywood Park. In this third hand, action folds to me in the hijack and I have king queen off suit, make a standard open to $20. Action folds to the big blind who folds. What's so special about this hand, you might be wondering? Well, those $5 in the big blind, those are some Bradley dollars. Easy money. It wasn't all easy decisions, however. In this next hand, we decided to play a bomb pot. There was actually a bomb pot every dealer change where everyone puts in 20 bucks, we all get dealt in and just play after the flop. So pretty much the same as every other hand, except everyone's in and there's no pre-flop play. Anyway, there's 180 in the middle and we get dealt king nine off suit. Not the worst hand possible, but the biggest problem in bomb pots is usually being out of position just because there's so many opponents left to act. Anyway, the flop comes down king queen five with two hearts, so we flop top pair, but that's about it. Action checks to me, and one of the issues with bomb pots is that typically one pair isn't really that strong of a hand. When everyone has literally 100% of their range, you can pretty much rule out having the best hand unless you have a very, very strong holding. So I decided to check it with so many players left behind. In retrospect, I think maybe a small bet is better just to deny equity from hands like smaller pairs or flush draws or straight draws. And if we get raised, I think it's a somewhat easy fold. Anyway, I decided to check it and action checks all the way around. The turn is the deuce of diamonds. And at this point with four cards being out there and us only having a weak top pair, I'm not sure if we have the best hand. I guess this kind of relates to having very little experience with bomb pots, but the player to my right this time leads out for $75. I don't think he's bluffing into eight other opponents. So after thinking about it for a little bit, I decided to just let it go, considering that this turn card could easily have improved someone behind us. And we could also just be behind the player on our right anyway. Surprisingly though, everyone else makes the fold as well. So the player on my right takes it down and then proudly shows 5-3 offsuit for third pair. <sighs> Obviously not what I was expecting to see. Turns out he was bluffing into the entire table and managed to get it through, so props to him. Not really happy with how I played it. I think a flop bet might be a little better. I don't know. Anyway, on to the next hand. Yeah. 
In this next hand, I'm in the straddle with pocket fives. The button opens to $30. The small blind makes the call. When the action gets to me, I decide to toss in the extra 20 and make the call as well. I actually thought about three betting here for a little, considering that the button was a pretty good active player. So I think his range could be really wide in this spot. And also the small blinds dead money in there makes it a little more attractive to put in the raise. But I decided to just call because I feel like this hand plays better as just a call. So three ways to a flop, which comes down seven, seven, four with two diamonds. Small blind checks. I decide to check it to the razor and he pretty quickly checks it back. So I'm feeling fairly comfortable with my hand now. The turns an offsuit three doesn't really change anything. Small blind checks again, which pretty much confirms that we have the best hand. So I decide to put out a small bet of $40 just for equity protection slash value. The button folds and the small blind pretty quickly makes the fold. So not really a super eventful hand, but when the stakes are five, five, 10, even just taking down a single raised pot is a good chunk of chips. In this next hand, under the gun opens to $20, plus one makes the call, and I look down at pocket twos from middle position. I decide to make the call, the cutoff makes the call, and when the action gets to the big blind, he somehow doesn't squeeze, but just makes the call instead. I had a feeling we were about to get forced out of this hand, but luckily, we get to see the flop five ways, which comes down pretty sweet for these pocket twos. Jack seven deuce rainbow. Flopping bottom set on a fairly dry board. Action checks all the way to me and I decide to bet $35. No need to go too big here considering that the flop is fairly dry and there's not really any turn cards we should be worried about. The cutoff makes the fold, but somehow the big blind calls, under the gun calls, and plus one calls. So pretty sizable pot brewing now. Turn comes the five of hearts, bringing in a backdoor flush draw. Action checks to me, and considering that a lot of players showed interest, I decided to size it up to $205. However, this time everyone makes the fold. So we take it down. I'm thinking maybe I should have sized a bit smaller there on the turn. Maybe 150 or 160 would have been a bit better. I don't know, maybe I'm just overthinking it, but happy to flop a set and take down another decent sized pot. Anyway, after playing for around four hours, I decided to call it a night rack up and head to the cage. So that was a wrap from Hollywood Park. I hope you guys enjoyed those hands. I don't really go to LA much, but every time I do, I seem to have a good time. So maybe I'll start going there a little bit more. Unfortunately, I couldn't get into any big spots with Brad or Andrew, but you're kind of at the mercy of short-term variants when you're only meeting for one night. Probably sometime in the future though. As for the results, I got into the game for 500, never needed to add on thankfully, and cashed out for quite a bit more than that. Always a welcome result, especially when you consider that the main goal for tonight wasn't necessarily to win. Obviously, I'm never trying to lose, but tonight was a little more focused on meeting people, socializing, etc., and obviously capturing some footage for the vlog. So that's a wrap for this time, you guys. Thanks again for watching. Thank you for the support. If you enjoyed the video and you gave it a thumbs up, I appreciate that. It really helps me out. And next time I'll see you guys will probably be from either a Morongo session they do splash spots on Sundays. I promised one of those vlogs pretty soon, so probably that's next. And after that, it's gonna be a few vlogs from a trip I mentioned a couple of vlogs back. We're going to Cleveland and Detroit. The exact dates and casinos are as follows. So if you guys are interested in meeting up there or you're local to the area, take a screenshot, feel free to send me a message on Instagram and I'll let you guys know exactly when and where I'll be playing some sessions. Anyway, I think that's it for this vlog. As always, thank you guys for the support. Run good out there, and I'll see you all next time. Peace.